Take one. Hello. Hi. Welcome to my home. Thank you for inviting us. My pleasure. I'm Andrew Borda from Tech 21, and this is Gary Lee, obviously. It is Getty Lee. And we are introducing this new rack mount that we developed together. Please tell us about the evolution of the GED 2112 3M. So I've been playing more and more with portable devices, uh, with rack mountable devices. After all these years, I just realized that I could convey my sound in a much less uh, imposing manner. My sound is made up of a couple of parts. I like to have a lot of bottom end, but the expressive part of my sound and the definition mm -hmm. in my playing comes out with a lot of top end and a little bit of distortion. Right. Let me ask you this. Like, how long have you been aware of the Sans Amp and when did you start to use it? Well, Jimbo Barton, uh -huh. who ha was our engineer for a couple of albums, uh, I think one of the studios we were recording in had a Sans amp, and he was using it on Alex's guitar. And I said, well, let, I'd like to hear what the bass sounds like through that. And we plugged it in, and I was able to get a pretty cool distortion out of it. So that sort of planted the seed for me. So let's hear some sounds, because uh, your sound is the way you pick it. Yeah, yeah. So well, even though we give the setting, which I'm going to show now, this is like a pretty flat setting. We're not going crazy here. No. Right? I don't have to go crazy because I sound crazy anyway. Exactly. So show us basically how... Uh, let's do like, like just like a soft picking first. Like, like, you know, I don't like, do soft picking. I know. The um, award show for Yes introduction to the Hall of Fame. Right. You yeah. didn't use nothing else except this unit. No, we just was, took that. That's pretty amazing. Yeah, it was the, one of the prototypes that we brought. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, it worked perfectly. And, and I understand you guys also worked on the, uh, tweaking the sound a little bit to sound more like a rig. Yeah. Tell me about that. Well, I think what we did was we turned up the uh, treble quite a bit. In fact, why don't I switch to the other guitar, because that's the guitar I played for the... Uh, I can just stick it there, I guess. So this is the guitar I played. This is the guitar I played at the S show. Right. And you can see... It's a pre-CBS bass from 62. It's, it's rounder, it has less aggressive mid-range. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So for this one... You really have to crank up the treble, yeah? Yeah, so we, we cranked the treble way up, right? It was almost full. Yeah, so... And I think I even turned the drive up more, didn't I? Not as much as that. Okay. A little more mid-range. A little more mid, okay, so... And so when I came in rehearsal with no Rick, this little <laughs> box, and plugged it in, and all the guys were like, wow, that bass sounds great. The song dictates what the bass sound's got to be. And you have to be flexible enough. And I find this is pretty flexible. Like if I really want to get aggressive with uh, the drive. You know, let's put this back the way we had it. So I find if you really want some. I, mean, I can get such great distortion out of this mm -hmm. just by playing with the drive and it eliminates you know messing about and already sounds a little compressed in there you know so I can I got such great flexibility with this unit just mm -hmm. to put it where I want if I need it to be more controlled.
So if I need more clarity, I just... I can get... Now right now we are running two channels, correct? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so if we take the deep channel right out of the play... pretty controlled and you've got definition Foundation. so then you add this back in all those subsonics are now coming through Did you ever envision that you, we can distill this whole thing down to one single rack? No, no. This is insane, really. <laughs> the, and when I tell people about it, they don't believe it. Mm -hmm. And most people out there will have a hard time believing that you can get what you want out of such a simple device. And as the technology changes, you have to be open to that. I think mm -hmm. Rush has always been a believer in embracing technology, not running from it. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, when I started to realize that I could get more control out of using these smaller boxes without it sounding, quote, too digitized, and that's the big fear of, of transistorized mm -hmm. equipment is that, that you're going to shrink your sound, not expand it. Right. Uh, but for me, as, and the kind of sound I was developing and always have worked at, I'm able to get more finely tuned into the nitty gritty of the definition of the sound by using these devices. Mm -hmm. And bottom end is usually the easiest thing to add one way or another, but the definition, the mid-range, the top end, the detail in sculpting that part of the sound is very important to me, mm -hmm. and I find it easier to accomplish with this kind of device. And uh, is there anything that you find that you're missing or lacking? Um, it just it, the only thing lacking is is my own imagination, you know, yeah. and my own willingness to push push myself. Right. You know, sometimes I play it safe, you know, because uh, I'm when, especially when I'm writing down here, I want a nice, clean, clear sound. And sometimes I forget that I can just go like that and go. And I can have more aggression, and now that's with a lot more top. But if I, if I take the top down, and I don't want it to sound so bright, I can still leave the drive. And, and all of a sudden, I got this real metallic sound, right? And you turn up the speakers, and then your pants are flapping. And, and this, there's a bit of a bass trap where I'm sitting here. So you're probably getting more bottom end there than I'm oh, getting that here. Really good yeah. here. The nice thing about this first of all is its portability. It's insanely portable. The second thing that I love about it is the way the deep is separated from the tone itself, right? So that's the deep off. So that's, I can shape the kind of, I can shape the kind of definition I want using all these aspects of it. And so then I add this element to it. And I've got great separation, and I've got the precision I want, and I've got the bottom that I need. And yeah, you can play around with the saturation too. To have it more aggressive or less aggressive. And when you start adding bottom, actual bottom to that, and coupling with the bottom on this, you can get a crazy amount of now all of a sudden that sound has gotten so thick and throaty. The third thing I love is how sensitive all these controls are. That when you add mid, you really hear the mid. When you add the drive, you can rock it out like, like a madman. And it's very controllable, you know. So at the same time, you can just give yourself a kind of a safe, clean, but aggressive sound.
I know that I can take this into any studio and I can get the sound I want without having to drag in, you know, a team of scientists, you know, <laughs> to reproduce my sound. So it's purpose built to give me the tone that I like to have and for me to use it in the way I use it. You can run it with an amplifier, you can run it with a DI. You know, to me it's a complement to what your setup is mm -hmm. or if it suits your playing, it can be the only thing in your setup, you know. But that's up to you and it's up to how you play. Just So this was designed for the way I use it mm -hmm. and we happen to believe that it's pretty darn flexible for most players out there. Okay. This is basically a direct device. It is a device that can give me the sound I want and in your hands you can make it into the sound that you want. The way you sound has to be your decision and you have to find the pieces of gear that make you sound like the best version of you. You have a lot of questions, by the way, about the uh, second button you can push. Just tell me what that does when it's not pushed in. Uh, what, yeah. what happens now? It goes off. <laughs> <laughs>